Hello, my fellow gnomes. Welcome to episode 11. We are getting chased by these zombies. Now, I've just thrown in a quick AK-47-3 model, and if we kill a bunch of these guys, uh, well, they're going to die pretty much as we'd expect, right? In the default Roblox way, they're just all going to tumble and break into all their component parts. And that's all well and good if you're wanting a classic sort of Roblox look. But maybe you want something with some ragdolls, right? Some good old corpses. And that's what we're going to do today. So first things first, let's just copy our enemy from the server storage. And I'm just going to bring him out here. Now, we can see that he has in his humanoid a few properties. Under behavior, there's this break joints on death, right? That's what causes that classic, you know, breakdown of parts to happen, right? So we untick that. And then if we untick uh, requires neck as well. And if we drag him back in, now what will happen, you'll see the zombie just falls over, right? So he's still all glued together, right? His, his joints are still as they were, but he's just going to fall to the floor. So if you were just wanting that, well, congratulations. Uh, you've already got a super basic um, ragdoll thing, but you probably don't really want uh, just that. So what we're going to do is we're going to write a script that's going to take all the component uh, joints of this character. It uses something called uh, Motor 6D. You see inside of the torso, we have all of these little joints. We hover over them, Motor 6D. And we're going to add in our own custom physics constraint called a ball in socket. Okay, and we're going to use that instead. So if we go into our enemy script, now when we get the new enemy, let's react to them dying. So new enemy dot humanoid dot died connect that into a function we could write it all here but i'm probably just going to add another function down here just for former things a little bit better we'll call this on death of the enemy and then we'll just connect it up here like so make sure that's the new enemy that we've just created and just so that we know this is all connected up okay uh, let's just say enemy dot humanoid and we're going to disable that little health bar so you'll see the humanoid has this property called display distance type. So we can set that to the enum humanoid display distance type dot none. And then let's also say the humanoid and we're going to say platform stand, which is a property down here. And we're going to set that to true, which means that the humanoid isn't going to attempt to stand up because sometimes you might kill an enemy and they'll like still be standing up, which is not really what we want either. So if we go back in and play, find our zombie, shoot them. And when we shoot them, you'll notice their health bar and the text above their head disappears. Cool. So now let's make them all floppy. Now, since this is an R6 uh, zombie, it's nice and straightforward. We can just go through the torso and access all of these motor 6D joints. So for I, V, in, enemy, dot torso, and call the get children method. So we're looping through all of them. And then let's check if that object is a motor 6D, right? Because if it's one of these attachments or the decal or something, we, we don't care about it. And let's also check that it's not the neck. You could make the neck into a floppy joint as well, but we're not going to do that today just because it makes it a little bit more tricky. You need to set up collisions or something. Otherwise, it looks very wrong. So we don't want to replace the neck. So if it does not equal the neck, otherwise, well, we could just destroy it. And if we destroy it straight away on death, we're basically just going to remove all the limbs. So they're just going to disappear. I'll just show you this real quick. There you go. You see the joints kind of disappear, uh, but without that sort of exploding apart way that it happens by default, they just kind of disintegrate, right? So we want to set up our own custom joint. We're going to create a function inside of on death called create socket, which is going to have a part and then a C0 and a C1. And we'll call this create socket method by passing in V dot part one. So if it's the left hip, for example, the part one, you see it connects to the left leg part. So we want to connect that and then the B, which
which is going to be the joint again, the C0. So that's the position that that's offset at dot C0 and then V dot C1, the offset of the other position. So then inside our create socket function, our ball socket equals a new ball socket constraint. Now, ball socket constraint requires attachments, right? Unlike a motor 60 where you can just reference a part and an offset, we need to create some new attachments. So to do that, I'm going to create yet another function called create attachment. And this will have the part it wants to be inside of along with a C frame offset. And so here we'll create an attachment instance dot new attachment we'll make the attachment dot name just so that we can kind of see what we're doing let's make it to part dot name concatenate that with attachment because we can don't need to do of course and then we're going to set it c frame equal to the c frame argument and we're going to parent it to the part and then finally just return back the attachment and so now we can call this function create attachment and it immediately set that to the attachment zero which is pretty cool now as this is an r6 character everything is connected to the torso so the attachment zero part is always going to be enemy dot torso and then we use the C0 value of that left hip. And then we need to create the second attachment point. And that's going to be creating an attachment on the part. And we'll use the C1 value this time. There's a bunch of things we can configure. So we could set limits enabled and we could configure a bunch of limits. And we can give this a name as well if we want. Art.name concatenate underscore socket. And finally, we need to add a parent for this, and I'm going to put it inside of the torso again. So now if we play, you'll have to ignore, um, there's a bunch of errors. This is just a free model um, AK-47 I'm using, causing all those errors. But if we get this zombie to approaches and we shoot him, we have now got a ragdoll. And if we kill these guys too, there we go. They're tumbling over over the train tracks. And if I was just to switch on to the server for a second, and if we look at these, we can see inside of them, inside of the torso, they now got all this new stuff we added. Okay, so we've got these various torso attachments in different places, and we've got these ball socket constraints that we have put into position. In fact, if I show you the constraint details, you can see them, there they all are, that we've added in to replace the motor 60s with these Socket constraints. Great. So we now have ragdolls in our game. The only thing that we might want to uh, add is the ability, and it's uh, nighttime now, is to be able to drag them so that we can um, put them, we can sell them maybe if it was uh, like a bounty, or we could put them inside of our, our train as fuel which of course you can do with zombies in dead rails. So what we're going to do when we have got the death, we need to set some attributes. So we'll say enemy and we'll add the tag of draggable. And since this is a zombie and you might want to add some different logic if you have different monster types, um, but we're going to add the tag of sellable. So not sellable of uh, flammable. So you, you might want to have sellable for some types, but we're doing zombies. So they're just flammable. So we can put them inside of the trains fuel. So if we just look inside of our drag handler a moment, that's inside starter character scripts, we are going to have to make a little modification because so far I've just been using single parts for everything we drag. Whereas now we're trying to drag an entire model. So all the way down here, when we're trying to figure out if we found anything with the draggable tag, as well as checking if the result has a tag, let's also say, or it's result.instance.parent has a tag of draggable, okay? So if it's a model and say we touch the torso, well, then the zombie will have a tag of draggable. And when it comes to highlighting the object, well, we're just going to need to check if it was the, the parent that had the tag. So therefore it's a model, then we're going to want to highlight the target dot parent. Otherwise else we'll just highlight the object as before. And so now if I've, oh, I've got an error, hang on, on line 85 of my drag system. 
Ah, because I'm chaining all of these ands and ors, let's just make sure this last one is wrapped inside of a bracket. So all of this, so it's this and this and this or this. So that has to be in brackets to keep the logic correct. So now we don't get the error, which is cool. And if I get one of these zombies over to me, there we go, he's dead. And if I now select him, we should see he does have the tag draggable and flammable, whereas none of the others do yet because they're not dead. And if I'm to go in and you see I hover over him, I now see he is fuel. Pretty cool. And if I try and drag him, I can do so. Drag him by the arm, bring him back to my, uh, my fuel, but I'm not actually going to be able to get him inside of the tank just yet. Um, so we're going to need to modify our script there inside of our train handler when we're detecting fuel let's see if part has tag or where we're just checking if the part had a tag let's just change the logic slightly here so let's create a variable is model which is going to be equal to whether the part has a parent to begin with and the part dot parent has the tag of flammable so if it's flammable or there's a model then we'll do this as before but we just need to change what we're actually destroying so if we've got a model, then we need to destroy the part.parent. Else, then we can just destroy the part. Oh no, more zombies on the run. But thankfully, I have this huge AK-47. Dun, 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 dun. And these will be very handy for my train, which actually has tons of fuel. Um, so just making sure that I hadn't had some need for fuel. But if I pop this in... There we go. He has now sort of filled up the tank a tiny bit. We're already full, but um, there we go. We've thrown him in and we can keep going a little bit further. So that is the end of episode 11. We now have a, a corpse system for our enemies in the game. And oh my word, this is a lot of zombies we've spawned in. We really don't need this many. I just set the interval to super high for testing. Let's set that back to 10. But that's it for this video. If you want to get access to all the, the scripts and also the next episode early, then be sure to join the Gnome Code Academy um, at gnomecode.com. But until next time, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.